In your laboratory supplies, you've been given several species of twigs, and your task for lab this week will be to use those twigs and a dichotomous key to then identify what species each twig comes from. To do that, you need to know something about twig morphology. I'm not going to go over all aspects of twig morphology today because we've already gone over parts of that in the day three narrated lecture um, regarding shoots. The parts that are most relevant to twig identification are around minutes seven through 16. I talk about leaf arrangement as well as twig parts there. So I'm just going to assume that background knowledge. And if you look at all of the twigs that you have for lab this week, this should be approximately representative. Here, I'm not going to go over specific details, but what I want you to notice is that twigs look incredibly different. You might not have noticed this just casually walking through the woods, but if you look at these twigs here, you can see that they vary in their thickness, they vary in the arrangement of how the leaves come off, their um, terminal or apical bud looks pretty different, some of them are straight, some of them zigzag, there are just a lot of differences. This is important because it means that even in wintertime when trees do not have leaves, then if we can access twigs, we have a pretty good chance of figuring out what the tree is. So the goals for this lesson are first, learning how to use a dichotomous key. Dichotomous keys are used throughout biology um, to identify different groups of organisms from plants to insects or birds, etc. Additionally, um, by working with twigs and looking carefully at their traits, you're going to get better at recognizing those traits. So we're going to start by talking about what a dichotomous key is and how it's organized. A dichotomous key is a tool for organizing information into a series of steps. And as the word dichotomous implies, a dichotomy is something with only two possibilities. So a dichotomous key organizes information into a series of questions that have only two answers. At each step, the user chooses between those two alternative possibilities, and eventually the key brings you down to the point where one of the choices will lead you to the identification. In our case, it will be the species of twig that you are looking at. And this is shown diagrammatically here, not with specific examples, but just with generalizations. So you can imagine starting up here at the top of this figure, and the first question in your key would be, is it more similar to A or B? Um, A and B can stand for whatever. You would decide. Maybe it's more similar to B. If that's the case, then you'll get to another question that will ask, is it more similar for some other trait to G or H? And you'll choose, and depending on which one you choose, you would end up at this particular answer or this one. Alternatively, right back at the start, maybe the twig, let's say, was more similar to A. If so, you would go in this direction, and then instead of answering a question about G or H, you would answer a question about C or D, and that might bring you to an answer, or if you ended up on this path, you might have to answer another question before finally getting to your answer. So you can see the paths are not necessarily the same length, and it's not necessarily the case that you're going to answer the same questions no matter what. Sometimes one trait might be relevant, and sometimes some other trait might be relevant. No matter what, though, you should end up at an answer. Once you get to that answer, you can then check and see if the answer looks right. Hopefully it does, but sometimes it doesn't, and that usually means we made a mistake somewhere along the way. When that happens, then we go back and we start checking the questions until we get to a spot where maybe we made a mistake. Then we can try going in the other direction to see if the answer we get looks more promising. So instead of a conceptual example, let's look at an actual dichotomous key. And this comes from the twig key that you will be using for this week's assignment, which is on Blackboard. Here we have a series of pairs of choices again, 
and you can see them together here, here, and here, for example. And in each case, there's two possibilities. The first one is just numbered by a normal number. The second one is numbered by a number with an apostrophe after it, or um, in mathematical language, a prime symbol. So we can say choice one or choice one prime. And we would always start at the top. So we would start with this pair of choices and we would look at the number of vascular bundles. We'll talk about what that means momentarily. And if there are more than six, then we would go on to question two. If there was either one through five vascular bundles or they're not discernible, in other words, we can't see them at all, then instead of going to question two, we would go ahead to question three. So let's imagine that in fact there were, let's imagine eight vascular bundle scars. If that's the case, then this tells us to go on to question two. Now again, we have two choices. This tells us that either there's going to be buds with about six pairs of scales, or there should be buds with either two or three pairs of scales, and the upper edge of the largest leaf scar is deeply notched, and the plant's growing somewhere with dry soils. So we would decide which of those two possibilities sounds better. If there was about six pairs of scales, that would tell us the plant was buckeye. Buckeye is a common name. The scientific name for buckeye would be Esulus <clears throat> sylvatica. You can tell a scientific name because it's always written in italics. The first letter is capitalized of the first word, but the first letter of the second word is always lowercase. This is the name of the genus. The second word is the name of the species. If instead there were two or three pairs of scales, then we would be looking at white ash. That's again the common name. Fraxinus americana is the scientific name. Now let's imagine that we found something else. Like let's imagine we found one pair of scales. That would be a good clue that perhaps we'd made a mistake earlier in the key. And we might want to go back and look at those bundle scars and see if actually there were only one to five, for example. Now let's imagine that, um, in fact, there were just one to five bundle scars. In this case, we would have skipped question two altogether. We would have come down to question three, and we would have seen which possibility looked better. If the axillary buds, bud scales looked woody, in other words, the bud scales were harder than normal bud scales, um, either woody or leathery, and if the pith, and we'll talk about the pith again soon, if that was spongy and white, that would tell us it was elderberry. But if the bud scales were not especially woody or leathery, in other words, if they were just sort of normal, then whether the pith was spongy white or otherwise, we would go on to question four. Let's imagine that it just had normal bud scales and the pith was sort of normal. We'd come down here, we would look at the axillary buds, and we would see whether they were obscured by pedial bases or leaf scars. If so, we would know it was flowering dogwood, or the scientific name is Cornus florida. If not, then we would go on to question five, which isn't shown um, on this slide. We are gonna do this exercise with a key to woody twigs um, of the southeastern United States and all of the twigs I've sent you come from this region. This, I should warn you, is an abridged twig. I removed about half of the species, maybe more from it, to make the exercise a little bit simpler for you, but that means if you just go outside and find a twig, it might or might not key out correctly according to this. Um, and if you want the full key, then I'd be happy to send it to you. Just send me an email and I can get it to you. Uh, very easily. So the other warning for this particular dichotomous key, I told you dichotomous keys should only have two choices. I simplified the start of the key a little bit by making the very first choice that you make a choice among three options. Your options are that the leaf scars are opposite or world. If they are one of those two, you are going to go on to group one. I'm going to modify this to add world. 
if the leaf scars are alternate and the pith of the internode is either diaphragmed or chambered, you're going to go on to group 2. And the third possibility is that if the leaf scars are alternate and the pith of the internode is either, or rather, if the pith of the internode is homogeneous, then you are going to go on to group 3. So here you've got three choices. Everywhere else you have only two choices. When you look at your twigs, you're going to have to look at fine details, like the number of bumps inside particular leaf scars. To do this effectively, you need a hand lens. You all have been supplied the hand lens in your kits, and I think it is in the bag with the twigs themselves. You can see a picture here of what it looks like. It is a 10x hand lens, meaning that it modifies the, um, the object being viewed 10 times. To use the hand lens, you're going to hold the hand lens up such that the lens is almost touching your eyelashes. And then you're going to hold the twig very close to the hand lens, about an inch or two centimeters away, and move it back and forth a little bit until it comes into sharp focus. You'll notice that there are two different lenses on your hand lens. You'll probably want to use them both simultaneously as shown here. That gives you the highest magnification you can achieve. So I've already warned you in other aspects of this course. There's a whole lot of terminology and that is necessary so we can be as precise as possible allowing identifications. To help you learn this terminology, we're going to go over some here. I have also provided sketches of the meanings of various terms in the margin of the key itself. I included the sketches the first time I saw the term in the key. That means if the term appears again on the second or third or fourth page of the key, if it's not illustrated, you might want to flip back to earlier pages and see if there's an illustration somewhere else. The first term you need to know is phylotaxy. I went over this in the lecture. Um, so the very quick version is if the buds are opposite one another, that's called opposite. If the buds come off one at a time, then regardless of the pattern, we will call that alternate. And if we have more than two buds coming off in groups like this, we call it world. And I wanted to give you a warning here that especially with world, they're often not exactly across from each other. One might be a little bit too low, one might be a little bit too high but they're pretty clearly in groups with internode and then another group. Sometimes with opposite, they're a little bit offset too. So don't worry about minor variations. Look for substantial variations. They call it alternate. The next term we need to look at is pith. And pith refers to um, the center of a stem. And there's three possible arrangements. One is homogeneous, which I've labeled solid here, but I think that the key uses the term homogeneous, so we will stick with that. And that just means that it's solid and that there's no striations, or there's no lines that divide it. If we look at diaphragmed, then it is still solid throughout. However, there's two different densities of material. There's a lighter, spongier material, then at regular intervals, which I'm trying to point out here, you can see that there are perpendicular lines that go through it. A third possibility is chambered. And chambered means that there are hollowed out areas, and then there are the equivalents of the diaphragms, but there's no material between them. So we've got these thick lines and then just empty space. Out of these three, homogeneous is by far the most common, diaphragmed is the second most common, chambered is the least. I will also warn you that this is not always consistent within the species. So for example, pawpaw twigs are sometimes homogeneous and they're sometimes diaphragmed. You'll see this if you go through the key, that sometimes whether you say that something is homogeneous or diaphragmed, eventually you're going to get to the same answer. 
Bundle scars are the places where vasculature attaches within a leaf scar. And these are always a little bit hard to see, but for the twigs for this particular lab section, at least in fall 2017, I had to collect the twigs before the leaves had started to come loose. That means the scars hadn't fully formed yet, and in many cases on the twigs I've sent you, it's quite difficult or sometimes impossible to tell. So to supplement the actual twigs I've sent you, I'm going to post pictures to Blackboard numbered 0 through 8 with um, images of the leaf scars, and you can use those to help um, identify the twigs. Here are some examples of bundle scars. Let's start with a pretty clear, easy one down here. You can see that there are three bundle scars, one, two, three. Up here, this is about the clearest illustration of bundle scars I've ever seen. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, bundle scars. Now, um, I will say that I've never in my life seen a twig this clear. Usually it takes a little bit of imagination. A good example of imagining is down here. Um, this is a tree of heaven twig. And you can see that there's approximately 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, somewhere around 12 bundle scars. Some of them it's hard to tell whether they're different or the same. Um, but 10 to 12 would be a pretty good estimate. And then this is one of the weirdest twigs right here. Um, this is, I believe, black walnut, and it has three groups of bundle scars, but it's not just three scars. You can see that within this bundle scar group, there are maybe eight or so individual bundle scars, and then there are several here and several here. So if in your key it says three groups and many, then see if it resembles this. The next trait that may come up in your key is naked buds. So we said in the lecture about twigs that there's typically scales, and scales are protective coverings around the young leaves. Scales happen mostly in temperate or dry areas, but in moist tropical areas, then they're not really necessary and so many plants don't have them. So on the right here we see a naked bud. This is the um, immature leaf and there's no protective covering over it. They don't always but they often look kind of hairy like this. Over here we have a typical scaly bud. So you can see bud scales. There's one, two, three, and there's additional ones we can't see in this picture on this bud. If bud scales are present, you will be asked about their number and arrangement. There's three terms that will be used. There's capitate. Capitate means there's only one scale. This is kind of like a cap on your head. There's no seams. You don't wear multiple caps. You just wear one, and it covers the entire top of your head. So a capitate bud is shown here, and a picture of another one from the same twig is shown here. And the key is that there's no seams. So the way that you know it's only one bud is that there's not a line that would let you split this into two anywhere on it. And the same thing is true in this photograph. Another possibility is that there are valvate buds. Valvate means that there are two scales, and those two scales come together along a seam. Think about a duck's beak with the upper and lower parts um, coming together along a seam. So here's a picture of a valvate bud. It looks like the capitate one, but you can see a fairly clear line along this ridge right here. And that's where there's one bud on the left, or one scale on the left and one scale on the right. Finally, we looked at this imbricate bud. Previously, we looked at the fact that there were several different scales. So an imbricate bud always has more than two scales, in other words, three or more, and they overlap each other, much like the shingles on a roof overlap other shingles. Something else you'll be asked about are stipular scars. Stipules, remember, are small leaf-like appendages, and they often fall off 
well before the leaves do, but they can leave scars behind, and these can help us identify twigs. So let's look at the picture on the right first. We can see these lines going the whole way around the twig, and so this is going to be what your key refers to as a stipular scar encircling the stem because it goes the whole way. Other times there will be a stipular scar, but it will end midway around, like maybe about right here. And I'm just showing you a picture that often confuses students. There's one point in the key where it refers to stipular scars projected upward into a ridge. And so if you hold the twig with the apex pointing up, this looks sort of like the roof of a house. A line goes up and then it goes back down. And there's an axillary bud here as well as here. There are several other terms used in your key. Many of these I've illustrated in the margin of the key itself. In other cases, I thought that they were obvious enough that you would be able to understand them without a definition. If you aren't sure or you want more information, you can always put the terms into Google and you should find a variety of websites that give you additional instructions. The dichotomous key portion of this assignment, you are going to turn in a word processing document that is compatible with Microsoft Word, so save it as a docx or some other similar format. And in that document, you are going to list all of the twigs in order and you are going to tell me all of the steps you made in the key. For example, if we did have 10 twigs in the assignment, then 10th on the list you would write twig 10 colon, and then you would start telling me the steps. In that first set of three choices, maybe you said that there were leaf scars that were alternate and the pith was homogeneous. If so, then you'd write that down and you'd tell me that based on that you went to group 3. Then in group 3, Perhaps for the first question, you said, yes, there are prickles or thorns present. That is choice one, not one prime. So you just write the one here. And choice one takes you to question two. For question two, you would have the choice about whether the stems were trailing and grooved with bundle, bundle scars not evident, or instead two prime is that the stems are erect, not grooved, and bundle scars are evident. If that is the more relevant choice for your twig, you would choose that and you would tell me then that the common name of the species is rose and its scientific name is Rosa SPP period. Incidentally, the SPP period just means species. So there are many species of rose that would fit this description and we're not sure which one it is. So this is saying that there's more than one species within this genus. You then would do this for the other twigs and you would turn in that document. I will grade it. I will indicate if you've made any mistakes and if you did I will cross off whichever choice was incorrect. Next week you'll go back and make revisions to correct any problems that do occur.